Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. And Mary Magdalene, a disciple and friend of Jesus, author Bonnie Ring, focuses on the life and impact of Mary Magdalene and reveals her to be a role model for women and girls today. The book aims to explore Mary Magdalene's life and relationship with Jesus. Bonnie Ring is an ordained priest in the Episcopal Church, educated at Vassar College at New York University. She completed master's and doctoral degrees in adult education from Boston University, also a master's in divinity degree. During seminary, she became acquainted with the women who knew Jesus as recipients of his teachings and healings, which led her to lead interactive and self-reflective retreats on those women throughout the United States and Canada. This eventually led to the publication of Women Who Knew Jesus. We've talked with Dr. Ring several times about that book. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, or any YouTube channel, wherever you listen to to podcasts, you'll be able to listen to our podcast talking about the book Women Who Knew Jesus. Mary Magdalene, a disciple and friend of Jesus, is her first children's book. Dr. Bonnie Ring, Episcopal priest, acclaimed retreat leader, spiritual director, and best-selling author, back with us on This Week in America. Dr. Ring, welcome back to the program. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Well, thank you. This is such an interesting book, and the first children's book, we'll talk about that aspect of it here in, uh, in a few seconds, but when did you first learn about Mary Magdalene? When did this story come to life for you? Oh, Mary Magdalene was one of the people that I chose when my first semester of seminary, and I had to write five meditations on saints from the first 500 years of the church. And I discovered that she had been um, mistaken, that's a, that's a kind way of saying it, Pope Gregory the Great, um, decided that all the women that anointed Jesus were one, and he took a repentant woman and named her Mary Magdalene, and she wasn't. And so he maligned her identity, and it went on until 1965 when Vatican II finally corrected it. So if you, if you talk to anybody that's 50 and older, other, and you say Mary Magdalene, they're going to say, oh, she was a prostitute. Yeah, exactly, yes. And 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 I have to say... No, that was a mistake. Uh, but it's, it's, it offends me uh, <laughs> that the mistake is, is still remembered rather than the truth. The truth is that she was a woman who was healed by Jesus, and she was very impressed with him, and she joined him along with the male disciples and several other women from Galilee. She traveled with him. She... Uh, was really responsible for the development of the church, um, and um, as, after his death, and she was she was his confidant, and he had he had a a respect for her, and an, and an, a mutual understanding and appreciation that the male disciples never accomplished. They they had a lot of trouble understanding Jesus, and she got it. She just got it. It's, nope. a, it's amazing that relationship, and I'm fall into that category, really fall into that category of over 50 and grew up with another impression of Mary Magdalene. And when I first read this, uh, I thought, well, this is an interesting take on the story, and I'm reading the story, and I'm going back and rereading it because it's so different than what I learned growing up. What an injustice was done for literally centuries, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, you know, I got to a point where... And long before I thought of writing a children's book about Mary Magdalene, I got to a point where every time her feast day came up, I invited a church to invite me to come preach about her. So within the Diocese of California, she's fairly well known because I've been all over the diocese talking about Mary Magdalene. Um it's just amazing how the story was out there, and now it's corrected. And uh, there's two books that we're talking about on the program, focusing today on Mary Magdalene, a disciple and friend of Jesus. The other book is a powerful book, Women Who Knew Jesus, both by Reverend Dr. Bonnie Ring. Website, drbonniringbooks.com. 
You'll find the book at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, URLinkPublishing.com, all of those. And if you go to our website, you'll be able to link on and, and get information as well. What aspect of this really interested you? When was it you thought, you know, I really need to write a book about her and gear it for young, younger women, young, younger girls? Well, um, in, in 2022, I started revising Women Who Knew Jesus, and um, I came across her again, and it was during the pandemic, and there was a restriction on what I could do and where I could go and uh, yes. how free I could be. And it occurred to me, you know, the church is still saying that the favored woman is Mary because she was compliant. She did what the angel and God asked her. Um, well, there are a lot of feminists that don't think that she was that compliant. They, they really feel like she had a choice and she made the choice to say yes. So I um, I just used the free time to play with the idea of telling a story to girls and little boys too, for that matter, about this extraordinary woman who befriended Jesus and who appreciated what he was doing and why he was doing it. And I was working with Diamond Media Press and they had an artist to work with. And we were able to capture in in illustrations the the growing development of their friendship and um, her role in influencing others to follow him and listen to him. Talk about the the role of illustrations because they're very powerful in your book. You could just look at the pictures and see that relationship. The text is there yeah. and the text is wonderful. And I had a lot to do with that. I never met the artist, but whenever she or he uh, sent me an illustration, I would I would give feedback as to what was missing, and 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 the missing qualities were the. The, the the closeness of the relationship, the honesty of the relationship, and the importance of the relationship. And so, as I go through the book, I love the illustrations. Yes, I think I think they say exactly what their the words describe. So the words don't have to be a lot. You know. Yes. The 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 pictures tell the story. The pictures are so complimentary of the story and your text. It's a book that is so well done. The book is Mary Magdalene, A Disciple and Friend of Jesus by Bonnie Ring. Book available wherever books are sold. Our website is drbonnieringbooks.com. A link on our website, This Week in America.us, will take you directly to her website and information on the book there as well. Why was she given the title, The Apostle to the Apostles in the Orthodox Churches? Well, that's a very good question, because um, when she went to the tomb to officially bury Jesus after the Sabbath, the tomb was empty. And there were angels there who said to her, Jesus has risen. He will meet with you in Galilee. Go tell the others. And she left the tomb, and she was distraught because she couldn't find him. She didn't know who had taken his body. And Jesus appeared before her, and he repeated it. Go tell my brothers and sisters that I have risen, and I will meet you in Galilee, just as I promised. And when she got there, of course, they didn't believe her. They had to go look for themselves. It was only when they saw that the tomb was empty that they believed her. But the Orthodox Church never had the misinformation from Pope Gregory. As a consequence, she was the one that Jesus chose to tell the others. So she became the apostle to the apostles. What a remarkable story. she's always story. had that title in the Orthodox Church. Remarkable story that comes to life in this book, Women Who Knew Jesus as well. And one of the few disciples of Jesus who uh, remained with him during his crucifixion and was a witness to his death. I mean, she really played a major role in his ministry, didn't she? Yes. And I think, you know, the relationship was so important that there was no other place she would be but beside him when he was dying. And then she wanted to know where they laid him so that she could come back and anoint his body. 
And so she followed them to the to the tomb, saw where the body was laid, and then came back the next morning after the Sabbath. What was her relationship with the other men? This, of course, was a different period in time where women were certainly not considered on the same level as men. What was her relationship with the other apostles and men in general? Well, there's you get a picture of it from the non-canonical uh, Gospels that they found, the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. They're not included in the Holy Scriptures because... There was disagreement as to how truthful they were, but in in the um, in the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, Peter says to her, "Tell us what you know about Jesus that we don't know, because you've had more contact with him." And so she does. Um, they the difference I think is that with Jesus. Women had equal status, despite the fact that within the culture of Palestine in the first century, women were second or third class citizens. They were they were owned by their husbands, and they got names after their husbands, so and so's wife. Um, she is one of the few people in the Gospels where you hear, hear her whole name, Mary of Magdala, just like you hear Mary of Nazareth or Mary and Martha of Bethany. Whereas the men, they they were, they weren't as educated or as profoundly moved by Jesus. They... They followed him, and they were dutiful, and they um, obviously cared for him. And But when he was taken to Galgotha to die on the cross, they got so frightened that what happened to him would happen to them that they all ran away. Uh-huh. And, as, and Peter stayed behind, and as soon as somebody recognized him, he ran away too. So the only people that stayed with Jesus while he was dying were these women. They just stood by him and watched, horrified, but watched. It's just such gave a, him the it, comfort of their presence. That's such a powerful story, and it's in both books. We're going to talk specifically, talking specifically about Mary Magdalene, a disciple and friend of Jesus, the children's book, and of course, much more in Women Who Knew Jesus, which is the book we talked about on the program a week ago, and uh, the podcast is available on our website, This Week in America dot us. What inspired you to take this story and turn it into a children's book? What was it? That, what message did you want to get out to to young people? I wanted them to have a role model um, of a person who had faith and was just like them. She didn't have a degree. She wasn't a somebody. She just believed. And I just thought it would be important in their self-development and in their faith development to know that there was a woman who they could identify with who thought he was important. And, you know, I still feel that way. Just like when I was a teenager, I saw a Christmas pageant for the first time. And they had you know, all the prophecies of the babe and so forth, and then a pageant with a baby boy being born. And it just, it left me with an impression of Mary, the mother of Jesus, as just being so um, courageous and and so devout that she would do for God what God asked. And I feel the same way about Mary Magdalene, that uh, she was given a very different role, um, but she was very loyal, and she's just a good example of what it means to be a friend. 
I mentioned before. And by your friends. Well, yes, and I mentioned before young girls, and you said young boys as well, and that is so true that uh, uh, for a, a young boy to hear this story as well, it puts things in a, a different perspective. As a young girl, you talk about what they can do to emulate her virtue. Talk a little bit about that, the lessons that a, a young girl can learn from the Mary Magdalene story. Well, there are two things. One is you can you can see the friendship that existed between them and the loyalty and ask yourself, okay, what's my relationship with Jesus going to be? Am I going to be loyal like Mary Magdalene? And what's my friendship like with my friends? Am I loyal to my friends? Do I care what happens to them? If something happens to them, do I go and comfort them? And so the, the last line of the book, I love it. <laughs> it's got a bunch of kids, and um, it says, Jesus loves his friends. You are one of his friends, and he loves you too. And then it says, become a friend of Jesus today and every day, just like Mary Magdalene. Yeah, that's, that's so the well point done. Of the book. That is so well done. Are there other books out there, children's books uh, out there devoted to her? Not that I know of. This is the only one. And I think that's amazing. Yes, it is. I was trying to think of something and sort of Googling, and I couldn't find anything. And it's like, well, this is sort of amazing. This is the first time this book has been written mm -hmm. uh, for a, and, for a you know, younger audience. I didn't audience. know that when I wrote it. Um, I didn't find that out until after I published it. But I'm thrilled because I get to convey the real story of Mary Magdalene, not the story that li lived on for centuries under Pope Gregory. I am still shocked at that. As we talk about it, it's the third time we've talked about that, and I'm still thinking, did I not hear things correctly as I was going through school, and this was all Catholic school, and this was all presented to me? It's such an uh, amazing story. Uh, she comes to life, Mary Magdalene comes to life, and in both of the books, the book Mary Magdalene, A Disciple and Friend of Jesus, the children's book, you've done such an excellent job writing this book at that level and conveying that message in the text, in the pictures. Are you working on more children's books? I'm, I'm, um, my publisher, Your Link, is urging me to do some of the other women. And um, so that, that's, that's next steps. I think, I, I think having for women to have, and women children, to have role models is really important to see somebody that you can say, oh, I want to be just like that. And um, uh, actually, I have taught men about the women who knew Jesus. I was invited, right, just before the pandemic, I was invited to South India, and I taught at a seminary there where all the students were men, and they brought in a group of women as well. And so I first I taught the women, and then the women taught more women, and then I taught the guys. And, you know, it was really amazing because their first attitude was, why are you bothering us about this woman? You know? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I said, because you got women in your congregations and they need to know her. And by the time I finished, they were excited. They had something they could teach that would be um, favorable to the women. And, and and she's such a good role model. She just, she, she, she was constant. She was persistent. She um, was trustworthy, all the things that you would want in a friend. If you go to Dr. Bonnie's website, drbonnieringbooks.com, there's a blog section there, great information as well. And I'm looking at a picture. Was that uh, India? Was that the, the retreat you did that the picture is posted on the website? I think so. Yes. Yeah, and I wanted to ask you yes. about that because you're there, you're in India, you're taking this message over there. Uh, you went worldwide with the message, women who knew Jesus. What is the reaction of people when they hear this story? Oh, well, the women, the women in India were just amazing. Um, all of them were lay women except one, there was one woman who was a deacon. They have no women priests in India. And um, at the end of the retreat, I gave a Eucharist, and I invited them to come stand with me around the altar. And they had never been 
offered that opportunity before. Amazing. And it was just a way of saying, you're valued, and you belong here. And in India, what I discovered when I went to church was that the women lined up for communion first, and of course they were wearing these multicolored saris, that were, so it was just this beautiful long line of color. And then after they took communion, the men lined up and took communion. So for them to be treated like equals, to surround the altar with their presence, was really very special. And I didn't, I just was acting spontaneously. I didn't know I was creating something new and (laughs) extraordinary. Something that was long needed, and you brought it there. I mean, it's amazing the work that you've done in in spreading the message in your two books. What are you working on now? A, A new book? I have two books in process. One is called Jesus as a Spiritual Mentor um, to kind of convey how, how he, what advice he gave to develop faith, to um, listen to others, to care, to be compassionate. Um, years ago, when Marcus Borg was still alive and he had just written meeting Jesus again for the first time, he gave a five-day seminar on Jesus as a spiritual mentor, and of course he's no longer alive. So I've thought that I would like to go through this, go through the four Gospels and pick out the stories where he's describing how you live a spiritual life. He went off by himself when he wanted to talk to God. Um, he prayed aloud. He... Um, uh, I love it. One of my favorite stories is when he res- resurrected Lazarus. He he talked to God out loud so that people would know that his power came from God. So uh, um, I think that will be a, a meaningful book for a wide audience, not necessarily female, but yes. everybody. Um, and then I'm also working on a memoir, which I... Uh, also wrote during the pandemic, but I stopped it the year I went to seminary, which was 40 years ago. So I need to finish it and um, update it and kind of condense it a little. I would love to Uh, talk about both of those books, what you went through, sort of a trailblazer in taking these messages out there. And I I love the fact, I wish you were... uh, we're teaching religion teachers and telling them the, the real story and encouraging them to share that. I wish I had you as a religion teacher as, oh, as I was growing well, up. I was very lucky in seminary because my advisor thought the world of me. And so b- before I even graduated, he invited me to co-teach with him. Oh, fantastic. And I taught pastoral co- counseling for several years until he left the the seminary. Well, he knew that you were special, and we see that as we read your two books. The book we talked about today, Mary Magdalene, a disciple and friend of Jesus, her first children's book. This is a a must read for your library at home for the children, for the children to read, you to read with them, you to read together and uh, and talk about it. And the main book uh, that started this all, Women Who Knew Jesus. Again, we've talked about that before. Podcast available on uh, on our website. Uh, Dr. Bonnie, it is always a pleasure to have you on the program. Looking forward to having you back two more times to talk about the two new books out there. Okay. Thank, thank you for being that's with a, us. That's a deal. Okay, thank you. Our guest thank on the you. program, Reverend, you're, you're most welcome, Reverend Dr. Bonnie Ring. Her website is drbonnieringbooks.com. And, of course, information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. I thank you, our link publishing, for arranging our conversation with Reverend Ring on today's program. You'll find all of this on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.